and welcome to Adult Body Finders. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kirsten. And I'm Greenberry. And we're here to learn about sex. Yes, we are. <laughs> we're super excited to learn what, uh, what is out there. What's what is, going on? What is the sex? <laughs> what is the sex? Please, we want to know more and we want you to know more. If you are learning this for the first time, thanks for joining us. And if you're coming back, thank you so much for listening. Thanks for subscribing. You make us so happy. All of your support, we love you for it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're super excited today. Oh we have my an gosh. amazing guest. I have wanted to talk to Grace for a long time. This is a humble brag, but I find uh, Grace is a friend, a personal friend. And I wanted to talk to Grace on this show. Since, especially Since we, before we had the show, <laughs> you've wanted to talk to her. That's I think true. before before you even knew her, it's you wanted to talk true. to her. It's true. It's <laughs> true. She is. She's a fabulous actress, um, statuesque, stunning woman, and just kind. Like super. You're like, are you talking about me? <laughs> oh no! I was like, you're such a tease. They're not going to get to see her, and here you're describing this woman that they don't even get to see. <laughs> Well, but for the audio listeners, this is what you need to know. And since and you don't get to see, you get to get you get to know what she looks like. Use these use these words to fill out your imagination, <laughs> out your imagination. of what she looks like. Exactly, and she's so kind. And I met her doing a play, and I did not know what her side projects were, but she was one of those people that you just want to be friends with. And we became friends, and then I learned about her work. And she's totally an open book, happy to talk about it, and is just, she's just open. And so I wanted to talk to her about this because uh, I don't know much about sex working, about being, you know, I, I learned from her about the girlfriend experience, which is being someone, being paid to be someone's girlfriend for a night, for a few hours. Um, and she's, she's taught me so much. She is the Hollywood Escort Grace Grable. I love that. Yeah. That's a, a beautiful name. It really is. And it really fits her. Have you ever Oops. done any um any sort Sex of like work? <laughs> you know, little favors for a little bit of payoff, you know? Uh yeah, I make coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I make coffee sometimes and uh that is like I have to really act like I like people <laughs> and they're not fun people usually they are greenberry loves people <laughs> not the people she's serving coffee to most people that i serve coffee to are real nuisances if you've worked a customer service job boy do you know it mm-hmm. how about you you ever serve coffee <laughs> i have i have served coffee Is that that true? Uh, i've also i feel like there have been um times when I've gone out on dates with guys mm -hmm. where it feels like, and this is not nice, but it feels like they buy you dinner and they expect something else. I feel like a lot of us have been in that situation. I know. But um, it's never been discussed before. Discuss it with her <laughs> and let her know that she has to pay you back for dinner. <laughs> and then maybe it'll be cool. Maybe it'll be fine. Um, I've never felt. I don't remember consciously feeling that feeling. Um, I like, I was raised in like a Southern Baptist background. And so like the whole sex thing is kind of like a big thing anyway. So to like yeah. think that like going to dinner would be an exchange <laughs> to me would have been like, it's kind of like, you know, I'm thinking about dating and like how that, I wouldn't have even thought that. But I know that, I know, I know that people like talk about it and I know that people have, women especially have felt like, oh, I went out with this guy and now he thinks that he should get, and I think that there's no reason, like you should never feel like you have to do anything. And some of this, I do think I put on the, the date and put on the other person where I was like, because also just feeling guilty about stuff and being who I am when I was younger where I felt like, oh no, people pleaser. They spent so much money on me. <laughs> Ooh, gifts. I did not do well with gifts for a long time <laughs> because it felt very much of like I owe you something and I don't have money and I don't know. Yeah, not that I would go sleep with them, but I felt in that boat of, oh no, do I owe you? <laughs> yeah, I think I I know that feeling. Uh, <laughs> I have a friend who we went to dinner and she was married and. 
she, you know, but I didn't think that she, I always think, you know, you know, you don't have money to just spend on other people. Cause I, especially in New York city did not have money beyond rent most of the time. Like, like the meals that I got were from jobs that I had, like things were like, I did not have extra money. And so I remember her offering me something and I was like, okay, I'm going to go home and I'm going to eat. I'm like, going to get home. And I felt I, I don't know when, if ever, I'll get to repay you for this, uh-huh. so I can't take it. Yeah. Um, so I know that I know that mental hurdle of like you you did this thing for me. Uh, I don't want to. Do yeah. How do I please pay you don't, back? Please what don't. What am I supposed to do? What's my side of the deal? Yeah, now? I don't want that. Yeah. Um, but I never felt that with dates. I was always like, oh, we want we get to hang out. And, I mean, there's definitely when you don't have the finances to be like, oh yeah, you're gonna take me to a show and I'm gonna make you dinner at home it's gonna be pasta because I can afford the noodles (laughs) (laughs) that's all I got pasta and water (laughs) but yeah I do understand that that that, you know the feeling of like I can't pay you (laughs) what are you expecting here um where are we even what is even yes and And it's funny too like probably those dates were what like a 20 $20 $20 meal, maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> like, I mean, $50 overall tops for the whole, for both of us, probably. But when you're, when you don't have that, it's such a big gift. Yeah, and it feels like a lot. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, oh, very, very grateful. Then when you have it, you're like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. I had this friend, um, she was blonde, beautiful, and we would go to bars and she would get guys to buy her drinks. And I loved it because I was the friend. And so they would buy her a drink and me a drink because I was a friend. <laughs> and it was awesome because I was like, I don't feel like I owe anything. I'm not a part of this equation. So I get my free drink and then I'm out. And yes. that's it. And I don't have to do a part of this. Even though I don't think anybody necessarily wanted anything back except for like a thank you yeah. or a smile. That was also, again, this is me, younger me, putting it on other people. Right. Being like, I owe you. Yeah. It's always you give one, you get one back. There is none of this you give and nothing back. Right. So, um, yeah. But recently, I'm I'm fine. We're give, growing up. You can give. <laughs> Now we're like, hey, give it to our Patreon. Ah, <laughs> our show. Although you do get stuff back, just so you know, you get a lot back. <laughs> <laughs> but I think the whole point of this tangent is you don't know anyone sex for anything, and you can always say no. But if you do want to have dinner and exchange it for sex, have talk, a conversation. Talk about it beforehand. Have a beautiful <laughs> conversation before you go out. But I am really excited to get to talk to Grace, so I think we should get over there and, like, get our questions answered. Yeah, stop talking to us. Get talking to her. (laughs) So sweet. Grace Grable, a Los Angeles sex worker who, last I know, had a, you were a specialist in the girlfriend experience. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah, that's very fair. I would say, um... Uh, that's pretty much solely what I did for almost the majority of my time. Yeah, I would. I typically refer to myself as an escort. Um, okay. sex, sex worker is fine, but it just sounds like something like a cop made up or something. <laughs> it just sounds so clinical <laughs> and like, oh. <laughs> so. Are you a cop, Greenberry? What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, keep going. <laughs> So, uh, Grace, if you're on the video, Grace is an anonymous guest. Ooh. And if you're on the podcast, well, then you get the full experience. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Grace, you're talking about the girlfriend experience. Can you yeah. clarify what that is? Yeah. Um, so that does have a specific meaning to people in the know, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. It basically means you're going to get treated like someone who I really care about (laughs) to put it uh very succinctly but um it doesn't really have um, a lot of menu meanings um some people say oh it means that you're gonna have a uh bbbj which is a bareback blowjob some people say it doesn't involve that um some people say it involves kissing some people say it doesn't involve that I think it really just matters to the individual escort uh, she makes her own rules and they're usually on her website. So, 
<laughs> yeah. So you don't have to worry about like what you're going to get because typically she has it on her website so that uh, you don't have to talk about it in person. Oh, oh, what do you, do you talk to them beforehand and come up with some things that they want, don't want? Um, no, I never talk about it um, with potential clients um, because that would be something that would make me a little, little gun shy. Um, okay. Yeah. So um, I would just say, check out my website. <laughs> it's got all the info you need. <laughs> It'll answer all your questions. And if it doesn't answer a question, it means that I don't enjoy doing that particular thing and it's not going to happen. So yeah. if I were to say, Grace, do you do BBBJ? You'd go check out my website or can you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you mean, did I do? Yeah. Do I do? Do I like offer it? I I'm taking a little break sort of from okay. escorting right now. So that's why I'm using the past tense if I do that. Okay. Um, but yeah, I personally do because it's something I enjoy. Nice. Um, not everyone does. Um, there's ways to do it carefully and more safely. I won't say safely, but more safely. Um, and uh, I've been blessed that I've never gotten an STD. Well, that, yeah. In like six years, I think, about six years of, of doing escorting. Yeah. Are there certain precautions you take? Like you have to submit your records or um anything like that before you guys meet your, um your well the precautions are all on my end like i just assume that you have everything under the sun and <laughs> that you are completely unsafe so i take all the precautions that um i i everything is in my hands um okay. so i personally get tested once a month at uh the hollywood free clinic what up yeah. <laughs> what that place <laughs> I'm putting that in the show notes because yes. that's actually good for anyone who wants free testing. Thank yeah. you, Grace. Yes, absolutely. And they're just great, great people, really wonderful workers there. Um, I always used to go, okay, so the 21st, I would not schedule any clients because that would be the day I would go to get tested every single 21st of the month. And then I would go to Forever 21 and get a little treat afterwards. Oh, for, oh, for oh, <laughs> yeah. Treat yourself after, yeah, yeah. STD testing. Gotta treat yeah. yourself. And, and this is something that Kirsten and I have talked about personally, about uh, um, STDs and shame. And I, oh, yeah. I think the reality is we all go, ew, STD, ew, ew, germ, ew, it gross. But sex comes with risk it comes with risk in yes. every single way and that doesn't matter if you're working in as as a, not a sex worker because i'm not a cop oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can say sex worker it's totally fine <laughs> if you're working in the industry that provides sexual services or if you are just having sex even you know with your own partner because sometimes partners do things that you don't know about oh or, yeah uh ex calls them and says, hey, I have this yes, new. new partner, <laughs> yes. So no one is truly immune from it. And I think yeah. that we can no. kind of bias if you're like, if you're in a monogamous, you know, world of like, well, I don't, I'm not really, everyone, it's, it could be everyone anyone. has an STI. I mean, <laughs> yeah. not everyone, you don't, but everyone. Yeah, else. no, I just assume, yeah, just assume that they do and just take precautions into your own yeah. hands because that's all you can do. Um, you know, anyone can fake, uh, letter saying you're negative for all kinds of things you know it's so okay. easy to fake so <laughs> and, and if somebody does it's you know that's fine that's part of life and there are ways to protect yourself like you're saying and protect your partner um and yeah exactly the shame thing I don't think it needs to be a shame thing it just needs to be a let's talk and protect ourselves or let's not talk right. and I'll protect myself <laughs> exactly. I, am boss. I am Grace Grable excuse you <laughs> <laughs> yeah so Grace, of course I'm excited to talk to you because I, you're a personal friend of mine and yeah. oh, bragging. Yay. Bragging. <laughs> And I mean, I've always loved our talks because you're so open. So I want to hear Aww. your story. I want to hear the fanciest hotel that you've had sex with in Los Angeles. Oh, boy. <laughs> no, um, no, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I think I've, I think I've had sex in all of them. <laughs> Let's see, the Pink Palace for sure. Um, Beverly Hilton, or I guess, or whatever. I can't even remember it. I've been out of LA for, for a few months now. Um, I don't know, like, uh, 
I can't even think of all the names. That one on um, Santa Monica Boulevard. I I don't know. I can only think of their places. I don't know. Oh no. Was there anything about these places that like tickled you? So if the, if somebody said um whatever place, you'd be like, oh, I love that place because it has balconies. Yeah, I want to go to the Beverly, the Beverly. Because they have a garden or whatever. Mm -hmm. Was there something specific about these places that got you excited? Oh, Peninsula. That's, that's the one. The Peninsula is one of my favorites. Oh, um, yeah. But, yeah, you know, um, I really also loved, um, oh my gosh, I can't think of it either. Shit. Um, anyway, um, I don't think so, especially I was just happy when, you know, they have a five-star hotel like that. Um, there's a handful of them, you know, um, in the city because it, it usually means that they're going to be nicer, be a little bit more respectful, treat you better. Um, a lot of escorts say that they get treated equally fine across the economic spectrum, but I have definitely found the higher my rates were, the more pleasant the experience, the less hiccups, shall we say, <laughs> happened. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I Unfortunately, know it's true. A lot of life coaches will talk about their rates and, and, and and basically the investor is saying that they're making an investment in themselves. So the higher the bar, the more mm -hmm. that you're saying like, do you, how much do you want this experience and how beneficial is it to you? And you set that by your rate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're talking about life coaches and how they set their rates or yeah, how much yeah, they feel they're worth and stuff. They tell you to set your rate. How they tell you to set your rate, but also how they set their own rates. Like if you want to coach with them, then they're like, oh yes, yes, I'm a $5,000 coach. But the reason why you're paying $5,000 is because you're getting $5,000 of benefit. Of value. So, yeah. 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 Setting your value in a sense. And I understand, I grew up in poverty myself, so I understand that the, the, the mental hurdle of like, not people, poor people aren't bad, but I did notice that when I said that I'm worth this much, that people also had invested that much money. So they treated me like they invest, they invested something that, that translates. Yeah. I, yeah. I really think that has something to do with it. You know, um, uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> money and manners just seem to go together. This is just purely my own experience. You know, this is um, very controversial um, for sex workers, very controversial topic, but um, just my own personal experience, um, you know, money and manners do seem to go to together. Um, let's see. So um, at towards the end, I was charging a thousand an hour and mm -hmm. I've gone as low as 400. Okay. And there's a real, there was a real difference just in my own personal work, you know, across wow. those spectrums. Um, so, but as far as what I'm worth, like it should never, ever, ever be based on what you yeah. feel you're worth. I think it should Absolutely. be based purely on like your, the amount of money you need every month to cover your everything, plus how much you want to put into savings, plus how much you want, you know, and then you just divide that by how many hours a week you want to work. And then there you go. You got your number and charge that. There you it know? is. Yeah. Got to think of it as a business because it is a business. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's so <laughs> important. That that was one of the hardest things is because I never really had an assistant. Um, plenty of girls, especially in the like upper range of prices, um, have assistants. And um, so they speak with the assistant to schedule it and to do the reference checks and all that. Okay. And um, yeah, and that was when business grace had to come out, you know, yeah. and I had to be firm, very firm with most guys. Um, but when you're actually on the date, you want to be just like laughing and casual and cute and funny and spontaneous. And, you know, you want business grace to be very far. <laughs> so, <laughs> it was a little difficult having to separate the two. I almost sometimes thought of like having different accents and personalities yes. and pretending I was a different person on the phone. <laughs> I always thought about that. And like, if I ever had to do my own accounting and my own like business side of things, which I guess I do, but <laughs> I would, I always wanted to have a different than you would have, you know, this is Kirsten. And then that, yes. well, mm -hmm. that is, is Janet. And then <laughs> Janet. Yes, is exactly. That is my husband, Susan. She's like this blonde Bob having middle-aged divorcee. 
Yes. <laughs> and she's she jaded right? and she is pissed and she just wants to go. Yes. Crazy. And she's no nonsense. Trust me, brother. You do not want to cross her. <laughs> yeah. All the tricks have been done to her. She knows it all. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so no more business, Grace, and no more business, Janice, with the Bob. Let's talk girlfriend. And I want to hear about like your best boyfriend experiences. You know, like what were those boyfriends that like really stood out that made you like say, I hope they call again? <laughs> yeah. You mean when you say boyfriend, you mean um clients or yeah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my gosh. Okay, already, so Greenberry's already bought into the whole girlfriend experience. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, yes. So it's totally true that you get the spectrum of good looking to not so good looking guys. Okay. And, um, but there is one guy who was so beautiful and just so smoking hot in every regard. I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I will pay you. No, <laughs> not really, but Joel, so Joel from Australia, if you're listening, <laughs> yeah, he was, he was totally amazing. He was totally amazing. Um, oh my God. What's that? What? The accent, did the accent do it for you too? Oh my gosh. Yeah. The accent was definitely, whew, he was, he was smoking. He was amazing. And we actually like talked for the first 50 minutes and we just had just so much in common we were just like blabbing and having fun and jumping around on the bed and stuff and oh. barely didn't even get to the good part but <laughs> but we made sure to get it in so yeah. <laughs> How, did you see him often no i only saw him once so oh, um so the the majority of of guys i only saw once um i didn't really have a lot of regulars for whatever reason um, there's not a lot of regulars, period. Um, no matter what anyone tells you, um, <laughs> you know, it's like the whole appeal is for guys is that it's a buffet, you know, of women. Uh, so that's the yeah. whole thing. So if you get a regular, you know, I did have some and they were amazing. And, um, there was this one guy actually, he would pay me in stocks. Oh, yeah, he would pay me in stocks um, exactly under ten thousand dollars each time in stock transfer um, because it wasn't it was like pre-tax for him and stuff, so it worked for him. And we would go to Hawaii together, we would go to New York together, we would go to Vegas. It was just like he just wanted to like pay me a clump at a time and then just not worry about it, you know. That's awesome. <laughs> so, yeah. he was amazing. You got a whole experience out of that. It wasn't just just like go have sex and that's it. You got Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So these are married guys. They're like 90% married guys who are just lonely and, you know, just craving female companionship. And, um, you know, if they have a quote business trip coming up, then they want to take you on it. Oh, <laughs> and, scoundrels of married men. I hope they were telling their wives about this. <laughs> oh yes. I'm sure they, uh, <laughs> gave the wife the blow by blow. Oh yeah. <laughs> married and they're lonely mm -hmm. you know, if they're married you wouldn't think lonely what what's missing there is there like, oh girl <laughs> married people are some of the loneliest people out there it's it's really sad <laughs> It's really sad, but it's true. I mean, you know, you can definitely be lonely in a, a room full of your family, you know? Mm -hmm. Do you, was there something across the board where you were like, oh, they don't talk or they're not around much? Or is there something that you're like? I, I, I have a feeling that Grace on these days, you're like, tell me more about your sad marriage. Right, yeah. <laughs> That's why she kept getting called back. She's like, tell, is your wife a real bore in the sad? What's going on? getting that is like was there something missing or like did they come to you and they're like this is missing Help, give me this yes or, and all the boyfriends are like i'm looking for therapy tell me why my wife wants to grace you know what that cliche is so true it's so true that i <laughs> definitely felt like a therapist you know at least 50 percent right. of the time i mean i was like okay if this is how you want to use your couple hours great you know <laughs> yeah, it's true because i know that's a what is it called a not a myth but a true myth <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, uh, folklore? No, uh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but they're they're really not. They're they're not used to people actually listening to them, you know, and just looking in their eyes and actually hearing them and making them feel seen and heard. They're, you know, guys need it as much as we do, and they just they're not used to getting it. I mean, it doesn't come at home. It doesn't come in the office, you know. So 
I guess that's where I come in. Sorry. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They, they'll, wow. girl, they will tell me the craziest things that they will tell you just about anything um, because it's safe for them. They feel very safe um, and they know that it's not going to get around to any of their circles. Yeah. <laughs> they, they know that it's likely we we'll, won't see each other again, you know, so it feels very safe in that sense to them. Yeah, I've noticed I've actually done that a couple of times. I'm sure other people have, too, where you're with a complete stranger and for whatever reason, you tell them more than you would tell your husband. <laughs> it's the Uber like, effect. Yeah, you're, like, you're, you're cool. I'm never going to see you again. So I can tell you this crazy yep. thing that I don't tell anyone. <laughs> yep, it's true. It's true. And I drove for Uber too at one point, And that's exactly the experience I had with that. Oh with my that God, are you my Uber driver? <laughs> <laughs> so Probably. Like, you would not forget it. <laughs> Uh, just quickly back to the vacationing and kind of those people that you did see pretty often. And it sounds like you, uh, maybe not the same person, but you did mm-hmm. have kind of intimate conversations. Yeah. Were you able to always keep it professional or did you have like love and heartbreak in some of these? Ooh, did you say I love you ever? <laughs> no, but I've definitely had guys be like, you know, I want to marry you on the first date and stuff like that. Um, I've had guys say it to me. I've never said it back unless that was their kink. Um, that happened actually a couple of times where, you know, they wanted me to pretend that we were married and on our honeymoon or something. And, you know, so I would definitely act along with that, you know, um, but. Uh, and you were able to not confuse it. It was just, you know, you when you knew it was a job. It's a job. Um, yeah, I wasn't attracted to, you know, almost any of my clients. So, <laughs> so Jolt in Australia was unfortunately few and far between. <laughs> I have to ask, uh, popular, made popular by Pretty Woman, did yeah. you actually kiss on the lips? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's one of my favorite things to do. Um, 100%. Yeah, all that stuff, holding hands, massaging, you know, um, you just want them to feel really cared for and seen again, you know, it just all kind of comes back to that. Um, so a lot of women, um, have on their websites as something that's available, the PSE, uh, porn star experience. And then that's, that's something where you'll get a less personalized thing, but more like crazy wild in the sack, trying 30 different positions type of thing, you know? Um, so, so, and then that, that wouldn't involve like kissing and stuff that would involve just, you know, crazy hardcore stuff. (laughs) Yeah. I hadn't heard of TSE. So um, going back to the girlfriend experience, would you end up doing any sort of like kinky stuff in the bedroom or was it pretty much missionary and, and somewhat tame? Um, it was actually, it's kind of funny, but it's actually pretty rote. It was actually pretty, uh, you know, thing one, thing two, thing three. Okay. Now we're going to do position ABC, you know, um, it was was your standard, it was just your standard sex pretty much. Um, if there was anything unusual, um, they would talk about it beforehand and I'm fine talking about it as long as nothing explicit was said. Um, you know, I didn't want anything explicit in emails or over the phone before we met. Uh, we can talk explicit in person, you know, after you're verified and stuff, but, um, so sometimes they would be like, okay, I want this or that. And I'd either be like, no, or sure. If it sounded appealing, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm not a great submissive and I wasn't a great dominatrix. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, I, um, I started off as that and I kind of veered away towards from that pretty quick. Um, but I guess I was a great girlfriend. (laughs) (laughs) I have a question about the Dom and the sub, but we will need to get your caller on. We do have a caller for you. Oh, cool. Yes. So we have um, a little community and we always like to bring in anyone who is bold enough to write to us specific questions and we let them come on and just fire away. (laughs) I love it. I love it. Bring it on. All right. So this caller, uh, their name is Minnie, and I'm going to get them on briefly. Hi. Hello. (laughs) It's Greenberry. Hello. And we have Grace Grable, the Los Angeles. Escort. 
Jenny, can we have you say uh, escort, please? <laughs> Just to make sure you're not a police. <laughs> that police can say escort too, but okay. <laughs> you guys are cute. <laughs> All right, she said escort. I think that means that she is not a cop. <laughs> it's okay if she is. <laughs> I ain't gonna get arrested today. <laughs> Welcome, Minnie, to the show. We are excited to have you here, and we are excited to hear your question for Grace. Hi. Yes. Um, I, I was just wondering. Um, so my partner was with my partners in the past, and I just concerned that they might go back, you know? So what, what does that usually look like in your line of work? I did not catch her question fully. So basically, she's... Oh. Her partner uh, was with a escort in the past, uh -huh. and she's wondering if that's something that's going to happen again. Is that Ooh, um, I don't know. How strong is your relationship? I mean, um, if if you guys are tight, it generally doesn't happen. You know, it generally happens to the long marrieds. You know, married long time, lonely, don't talk. You know. Do you communicate with your, um, is it boyfriend or spouse or girlfriend? I don't know. <laughs> All right. It's my boyfriend. Um, I'm just worried that, like, after that experience, I'm not going to be enough. Oh. You know? Oh, gosh. Obviously. Um, Do you have a vagina? <laughs> <laughs> oh, honey, I am sure you are enough. I'm sure you are enough. Um, and escorts are do not have perfect bodies. Trust me, I do not have a perfect body. Um, I do not have a perfect perfect face. Um, we don't look as good as we do in our pictures online. In case, like you saw an online picture of her, and we're like, I don't know if it got to that point, but um, I would not worry that. Oh my gosh, I'm sure he's attracted to you. Oh, that's very sweet of you. <laughs> I'm just, I just, I guess I'm just worried because, like, that experience can be wonderful, like, because there is more experience there, and mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that I'm, like, Keeping my man. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting that he opened up enough, you know, to share that with you. That already tells me that you guys have a pretty tight relationship. Um, was it someone he saw on the regular, like at least once or twice a month, or um, just once, or? Uh huh. So like a once and done thing, kind of. You know, I I don't know if he's being honest about it being just once. Yeah. Do you know how far in the past it was? Um, a couple of months ago. It was before we started dating, but we've only been together for like three months. So. You've been together for three months, and it was a couple months ago. <laughs> well, it was like six months ago. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Um. Dude, yeah, I like so wouldn't worry about it. Um, maybe he's trying to tell you that he has a little bit of a fantasy regarding that, though. Hmm. Should we think about that? Um, he might, you know, enjoy the fantasy of you knocking on the door, you know, in your stockings and garter belt and uh, being like, hello. I'm so glad you made it here. <laughs> You're right on time. <laughs> et cetera, et cetera. I don't know. Just a thought. <laughs> Thought of it that way. Having artists that's a witch fun, but also very challenging. Okay, I was that was my thought, Minnie. Have you ever done anything like? Have you wore lingerie personally? Like not even with this partner, but is that anything that like is that horrifying you? Like maybe. Um, I I'm not opposed. I get that. Are you interested in some of this stuff? Maybe play around a little and see what what happens. Uh, I mean, I I think that what it what it really comes down to is I'm just intimidated by like all of it because it all a little out there, you know. That's fine. You're talking about over the course of the whole weekend. If I heard you correctly, you said it was over a boys' weekend. Yeah. Do you do you know what went on? Did he like share details or party or something? Yeah. Um, I don't know. 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 I
bachelor party or something like that. And did he let you know if like they went all the way or anything like that, or did he say, uh, I saw a sex worker at the end? <laughs> <laughs> to something of he's telling you this for a reason and it sounds like maybe he might have an interest in it and but that's something I would talk to him about and see if he's interested in a role-playing type of game or or if there's something specific like maybe it was that she dressed up or maybe it was that she spanked him or I don't know, but maybe there's something there. It sounds like he's bringing it up to you for a reason. And maybe that, or that requires some more digging it on could just part. be like, he's talking about his past and it doesn't mean yeah. anything like that at all. I mean, sometimes people, you know, it doesn't mean that he's trying to tell you that he wants you to be what that experience was. Um, you know, mm-hmm. is he, is he your first, um, lover or, um, cause you, He's my first, like, long-term. Okay. Long-term. So, long-term. It's, like, three months for me, so that's, like, I guess that's where the intimidation That's okay. There you go. Yeah. yeah. I don't have a good experience in long-term situation. That's so. Okay. Well, I think one of the, the big things about we've always found with relationships, it's the communication. And so talking is going to make you guys kind of like Grace was saying, that's going to make you guys closer. The fact that he opened up yeah. and talked yeah. about that's a I'm sign not, right there. I'm but, kind of amazed that he opened up about that. Honestly, yeah. like a lot of guys wouldn't. Um, can you say anything more about that? Is Does he typically, is he a very open person with you? be a great question for him yeah Yeah. exactly I think I know for me and I know I think everyone's intimidated by by anything you haven't experienced and I think the idea that like your partner could has you know potentially exchanged money for sex could mean like that's something that they're comfortable with in that you know you worry you worry you know like well you know it's not easy it's not as easy to have an affair with a stranger than to like if they know how to if they know how to work with a sex worker and, and, and do it well. <laughs> so I could see that um, being intimidating. And just in general, whenever you like start talking experiences, I personally, this is me. I don't like talking about people's past. I don't like to know about it. Uh, my love of, my love of. <laughs> <laughs> I love to know. Oh, I know. I used to when I was younger and I was like, nah, I don't, I don't need, I don't, because I don't, I, I guess I'm too jealous. I told you I'm jealous. I'm jealous. She's a jealous I'm jealous. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, good. You go, went and yeah, had sex. Right. Yeah. I think it's human, and I, yeah, I, I mean, and, but I think that the best thing is, and it is a new relationship. And the reality is the communication thing that we we preach it, but it's also like we know it's freaking hard. It's hard to bring yes. up anything. Yes. So like a lot of things that we've heard, like people kind of like you know, if you do that, want to be like, hey, um, if you want to try the lingerie, like like, hey, what do you think about me? getting some lingerie you find lingerie sexy but or and eventually saying you know hey I'm so happy that you told me about that experience I'm gonna be real with you I have these fears (laughs) and give him the opportunity to at least like give his perspective on it and also what you're talking about too is feeling it, it sounds like there's a little bit of insecurity in the relationship which is totally fine it, it's new and even if you've had a long-term relationship there's insecurity mm-hmm. oh and yeah so securing that relationship emotionally having these conversations so you can feel secure and and he can 
I think is beneficial. I think so too. I think that that's definitely the route that I need to go. Um, thank you so much. Yes. You're um, welcome. And I just want to add that I actually told every guy I was dating while I was an escort, um, I told all of them um, after a certain amount of time. So, um, and then we continued dating after that, you know, with all of them. So you'd be surprised at how open-minded guys are and how they just love our bodies and they just love us, honestly. So I don't know. I would say, yeah, communicate with him and and just just try to relax a little bit about it because maybe it wasn't such a hot experience for him. Who knows, you know? Yeah. Maybe he was intimidated. Maybe she rocked his dong and, she, and he's like, oh, geez, I'm not ready. Too much, too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you do, you rock it better, baby. <laughs> this is true, this is true. Guys can get intimidated by women's sex lives just as much oh, as we sure. can. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think finding that of also, you know, how you rock his world it will be really helpful in securing that, making you feel more secure and all that. And that's going to come through talking and yeah. playing. And just from talking to you now, I say you rock, Minnie. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. I really do that's right, girl. Eye opening. Absolutely. We always appreciate anyone who calls in. We know it's very scary and um, you never know what you're going to talk about and what direction it's going to go into. So yeah. we appreciate, especially yes. being vulnerable in a fresh relationship. So good luck with yeah. your blog brand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Minnie. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Aw, Minnie, she's so I cute. That. Yeah, <laughs> and that can be intimidating. I'd be intimidated if somebody came to me and, um, you know, in my past I had, I mean, I have been intimidated by partners that have been like, in my past, I've done some Meanwhile, crazy you're wild like, I love hearing about it. Tell me more, tell me more. Oh, my <laughs> <laughs> by Betty Big Lips. <laughs> well, it's funny. I usually am like, oh, I, I didn't ever I haven't done that, but yeah, okay, <laughs> I'm game. Let's play. <laughs> That's an awesome yeah. attitude. I've well, been thinking about it for 16 years now. Yeah, you had a girlfriend in fifth grade. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you never kissed, but you you touched hands. <laughs> you to the I don't yeah. want to talk about it. I actually, you brought this up, Grace. You had um, real relationships. Outside of your um, girlfriend experience, mm -hmm. and, and you told them, and they didn't melt down. <laughs> Quite the contrary. No, they seem to all be pretty open-minded guys to start off with, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that yeah. had something to do with it. I yeah. tend to go for kind of neurodivergent guys anyways. <laughs> but um, I, yeah, I just had a great experience with each of them. They were just so open-minded about it and um if anything seemed like okay whatever about the whole thing so wow yeah I'm impressed I'm, I'm surprised I feel like I'm I've also dated more um jealous guys caveman. In the past. <laughs> she used to date caveman I used to date caveman and they would be like I caveman no sex but me me yeah. sex no you be able to have oh. all the sex but don't ever Half of the sex. <laughs> well, even I've talked to Greenberry about this. I've had uh, I've been with guys where I've done well in the bedroom, <laughs> and they basically have shamed me and been like, "Oh, you oh. must have had sex with so many people because you." Oh them. God! So you are possession to them. Okay, I see. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> so they were exes. Okay, that's oh, good yeah. to hear. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Kicked him to the curb. Awesome. If you're awesome. Listening, do not do that to a woman. No one likes it. We will make fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> After 20 years of shame, not around. Okay, maybe not. But it feels like 20 years. It doesn't. <laughs> I know what you mean, girl. Yeah. I'm staring. I'm staring down 39 this year myself. I'm like, whoo. <laughs> Yeah. And that stuff from when you were young hangs around and mm -hmm. it's really annoying. And you know better, but it doesn't, I mean, it still sticks. It but it'll still, still pop its ugly head up and you're like, ooh, get away. I'm trying to get <laughs> 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 uh, Grace, you mentioned you aren't great at being submissive and you weren't a great dominatrix. <laughs> nope. <laughs> 
<laughs> neither one, neither one. Do you, want, do you want to talk a little bit about like some of your dominatrix things? Like dominatrix failures? <laughs> failures. Oh my gosh. Um, you know, um, towards, towards my, I had a recent ish experience where it, it was horrible. It was so bad. I actually left before it was really over <laughs> and I was just like apologizing and he was fine, but I just thought it went horrible. Um, I don't remember too much of the details. Unfortunately, I wish I could, if I could, I would tell you, but because honestly, I'm before every single date, I would usually have a shot or two of kettle one. <laughs> So, so um, that uh, does a uh, works wonders for the old memory in your thirties. <laughs> but so I don't remember a whole lot of the details. But um, he wanted someone, you know, dom uh, domineering or yeah, just yeah, one of the yeah. dominatrix sort of thing. And um, yeah, I I I was just rusty, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. And you felt like. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to go. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like that. It was kind of like that. Um, there was only one time I actually gave a guy his money back um, and was like, sorry, and faked an emergency call and stuff like that. And started crying like, oh, my aunt in Pennsylvania or something. But um, and that was because I like couldn't stand him physically. <laughs> Like he wasn't, he wasn't even like, you know, that like ugly or overweight or whatever. He was kind of normal, but like there was, the vibe was just off. And so we didn't really, we, we started getting into it and I just couldn't. So, um, but that only happened once. <laughs> um, and with the dominatrix guy, I ended up taking all the money with me. <laughs> but, <laughs> Because you are a professional escort, and I love to hear every the humanity of you're a professional, and you still have those like like a like a like an NFL athlete. Like sometimes you drop the ball. Sometimes it's like oh yeah, you're not yeah. on your A game. And and that one, the one you were talking about, the one that you gave him his money back, that sounds like an instinctual like yes danger. Yeah. it was it was more like and um I would love to be more spiritual I'm working on that but it was more like some kind of vibe I got um honestly mm -hmm. than anything else I just thought ick honestly I just my whole body kept saying ick and I remember my stomach was kind of tightening up and yeah. I was just like okay I'm gonna listen to my body on this one Good. yeah <laughs> I, I found um I have a ex-boyfriend who was not in particularly nice to me and I I got a type I got a type <laughs> oh boy and I found that people who have the same sort of posture as him and somewhat of the same body shape. I, I, I cringe when I see them and I, oh, wow. if people look like him, I, I, it makes me sick to my stomach and I mm -hmm. can't talk to them or I don't want to engage with them or anything. I feel scared. And I'm sure the people are fine. I'm sure they're fine. Is, is there abuse in this relationship? Uh, not physical, not physical. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But any kind of abuse can make you have the cringe factor yeah. for future guys who remind you of him, I'm sure. Yeah. So I could understand that, that in a, depending on situations for me, I know those guys are not necessarily bad guys. It just, it triggered something in me and I can't, can't do it. Yeah. Sorry, you have the same body type as a bad guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they probably take that as a compliment knowing guys. <laughs> A bad boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't have to name names, but have you shared an evening with a famous person? Oh. <laughs> um. Well, semi-famous, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. I knew of his name because um, I'm an actor or I was in the time in the industry in LA, you know, and um, he was definitely in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> he was, um, yeah, I don't want to say his name, but <laughs> what can I say about him? I don't know. Um, I'm not sure everyone would recognize him, but anybody who reads like, um, you know, the trades, uh, trades thank you, yes. variety and stuff. Okay. Would, would know of him. Like, oh, starstruck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, you know what? It was funny because he was actually really good. He was actually one of my really, really good-looking clients, and he was actually really good in the sack. And 
Um, I don't believe I've ever squirted, but I came this close to squirting. I swear to God. His finger game alone did it. <laughs> Why? How do you know you were about to squirt? Because I, okay, so I had been trying to squirt for a while before this, right? Reading up on it, YouTubes, whatever. And um, there's actually this hilarious YouTube where this guy uses a mannequin and like shows you how to try to make your girl squirt. But um, it's like this mannequin with completely like rubber flesh like, you know? Yes. <laughs> Hilariously lifelike. But um, so I was like, we were watching the YouTube together and I was like oh, trying to, you know, help. And I could feel like the feelings that you know if you read about like how to squirt they talk about feelings like you're gonna have to pee and how it's like this fullness um kind of more below your um kind of in the taint area more yeah. below your vagina and um so yeah so it almost happened I don't know why it didn't I forget what the problem was there but <laughs> but I almost did and to this day I still haven't but it's still uh it's still a goal before I die damn it on the fucking list to call him and hire him now yeah. <laughs> no dude he was one of those guys where I was thinking in my head like oh my gosh can I pay you <laughs> <laughs> I never did never said that but you know I was thinking it for a bunch of them <laughs> Kirsten and I have had talks about squirting versus peeing and it, it uh is very can be very confusing yeah um, because you've looked it up i think we've all seen um professionals sex worker we all stars. watch porn <laughs> nice nice all nice porn. Porn. And, and so i love it <laughs> <laughs> and we've talked about like having our own moistures downstairs and being i don't know personally sometimes i'm like is that too much is that pee <laughs> yeah yeah I, i'll go pee and i'm like i peed yeah and, I feel like I peed that in, but I'm in the camp that is moisture is not pee. That is a different. It's another fluid. There's something else that is. It could be. Yeah, it could very well be another fluid, and it's probably pee too. Yeah. Um, like like I've heard that like 99% of cases you do pee a little bit too, yeah. and as well as you know the um, uh, I think it's called you um the Garolin spot or something. Like there's the G spot, and then there's this other spot. Um, no, yeah, Brendelin yeah. spot. I don't know. I forget what. <laughs> I should know my own anatomy better, but um, yeah, he was in that Brendelin spot or whatever. <laughs> well, talking about, you know, talking about like this, the, the, the knowing your body better. I definitely remember myself in a, in a sex ed class, they literally had like, it was, it was a video shown to us in college, not in high school. And it was about like, basically like taking, I'm teaching you all now, taking the finger and basically like, like you're like saying, come here. Oh yeah. Like, inside the vagina. Like, hook. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not like, not like a hook, but you just like, you're, like, <laughs> you're rubbing it. You're not like hooking oh. it like a GD fish. Right. Thing. And then, and but then you're rubbing you're that texture area. <laughs> <laughs> whether or not we basically we've been talking about like this moisture we had a guest uh, a while back that was talking about like his experience with moisture and we're like number one uh, it's gonna be wet down there so if you like women like be ready for whatever the right is and we should google what the heck is it, it what it is because I don't think it is yeah I don't know what the fluids are all supposed to be and I don't know what the science actually I'll look it up <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's see if I can find that out. We can maybe answer that. We can put the final final stamp on it. So maybe squirting is also some urine. I don't Girl, know. Urine in there? Yeah. yeah, I I feel like it's probably going to involve some of that. <laughs> I mean, that's what they say, you know. Yeah. Well, I've I've heard mixed things, and I know for me personally, I'm like, please don't say I'm peeing on you. That kind of kills it for me. <laughs> yeah, that's I, not hot. On your turn. I know, I know, but this is. But I'm glad that Matthew was like, yeah, it shouldn't. It doesn't matter. Like, if it, it doesn't matter, because the reality yeah. is, what if it is a little pee? So who cares? Just put a tarp oh, down and <laughs> go to town. <laughs> I shake. And they don't always wipe themselves off completely. There's also some pee in there. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> Get all those nice fluids all mixed up in there. That's that's sex for you. Answer. Oh, WebMD has spoken. <laughs> we are getting scientific now. Squirting refers to fluid expelled from the vagina during orgasm. Not all people with vaginas squirt during orgasm, and those who do may only squirt some of the time. This type of orgasm includes 
includes a rapid ejection of urine from the bladder. WebMD has yep. spoken. Oh. Boom, there you go. Wow. She has spoken. <laughs> yeah, squirting sometimes also involves secretions from the skein gland. Is that the gland you were thinking of, Grace? Yeah, say it again. Skein? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, sounds about right. Skein glands are sometimes called the female prostate because that's yes. the one thing that you were touching right. whenever you hook in. Like, don't hook, but like, right. massage. don't hook it. Because you know how it's textured, you guys? You know how it's textured when you do that? Yeah. When you do that finger thing? That yeah. texture, I think, is that textured area, that spongy textured area is wow. is right around. I think that might be it. I mean, either yeah. that or it's real close. They, they just said yeah. it functions like the male prostate, which you always hear about making a man come with his b-hole. So, fellas, if you want to yeah. come, get ready for urine. WebMD said there's some urine in there. Case closed. The dong. And it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's the main thing, I think, that because I know I've. I've had that experience too, where I'm like, is that pee? And they're like, oh, pee, oh, pee. And I'm like, and they're I, like, great. I never want to come again. Yeah. I, yeah it's like, oh yeah, my gosh. It's like, Those guys are pussies. I didn't, I didn't feel, I wasn't like purposely like being like, I'm going to piss on you, you know, or like, you know, and I, and I remember going to the bathroom and, you know, afterwards, so I was like, maybe it was a pee. But I, um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I'm just farting. <laughs> yeah. So let's let them pee. <laughs> let them pee. I <laughs> mean, pee has a very distinctive smell too. Okay, and <laughs> and our fluids have a distinctive smell. So, and those two smells are quite distinct from each other. I think. So yeah, I think I think. Um, and it didn't smell like a big bag of piss. Yeah. So F you guys. Let me yeah. make Harrison Oh my gosh. Sure. I know. <laughs> guys, grow up. Put a tarp down and go to town. Yeah. <laughs> yes, <babe. laughs> I also love because we can't we can't see Grace, but she's like such like the sophisticated right? tall, like she is classic Hollywood. Oh, I imagine just like this Audrey Hepper. Yeah. Like, you know, pearls and all <laughs> and, and just talking about squirting and peeing yeah, and all the top down. down. <laughs> Who, who, me, Audrey Hepburn? Yes, yes. Oh, you're, girl, you're, I am much more like Sophia Loren, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> I am kind of built like a brick shit house. Well, you are hot. <laughs> oh. Our imagination. Well, thank you. Don't forget to check out my OnlyFans. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all so much. If you're watching, thank you for watching. If you're listening, thank you for listening. Uh, and thank you so much, Grace. Thank you for being our guest and for being so graceful and so free. <laughs> you are so welcome. You are so welcome. And don't forget to escort your friends, lovers, and others over onto this podcast. Yes. Oh, I love you it. heard it from the Los Angeles escort herself, Grace mm. Grable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and if you want more information about what we've been talking about we mentioned a few things i can't remember what they are right now but that's okay because they're all going to be in the show notes so yeah check them out and you'll get all that information there also along with it you will get our our patreon oh. information because we are mm. looking for some subscriptions Ooh la la keep this podcast going we need some monies to money makes the podcast world go round that's right money makes it blow up in 2023 baby yes, that's that. right and because you value value us right, right? <laughs> yes we have a value we you can have, find it on patreon we value ourselves like grace was telling us your value is not your finances but we, if you value our show and you want more and more and more, I mean, we got to have money to make it happen. Mm -hmm. I want more. That's all I know. I want more and more and more. Yes, yes. yes exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, if you're not already subscribing, you better subscribe because we hit you every other Wednesday. We hump, with hump day, we hump your ear with a new episode, a new guest, and they're always phenomenal. I mean, you can't always be Grace Grable, but hey, you got to tune in to see who we get. Oh, yeah. They are doing the humping and the pumping. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hump, hump, and make your lady squirt all the time. <laughs> and don't dump. <laughs> <laughs> and don't dump. Don't dump. Unless that's your thing. Unless that's your and thing. And you communicated that with your partner. Then you dump all over the place. <laughs>
Thank you all again. Thank you, Grace. Bye. 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 Bye.